Tozer's opening prayer is foundational for what he wants his readers to understand. If I may paraphrase, we know that you are present, God, but our knowledge is shaky and lacks the spiritual insight and flavor of the sweetness of the fruit characteristic of knowing your presence. Help us to make the necessary changes that usher us into the true experience of the words. In your presence is fullness of joy. He introduces the chapter with that prayer, admitting our lack of understanding the depth of comfort that should rest upon Christians when we have embraced the sweetness of a walk with God that is seamless and void of misgivings because we totally get it. We understand our engagement with him because of his presence. And then Tozer attributes the lack of joy that identifies us is a result of our failure to move in the knowledge of God's presence. Omnipresence is an aspect of God's eternity in which he transcends the limitations of space and is present in all places at all times. Present, of course, means here, close to, next to, and the prefix omni, all, gives it universality or popularity. God is everywhere, here, close to everything, next to everyone. His being knows no limits, therefore there can be no limit to his presence. In his infinitude, or his limitlessness, God surrounds the finite or restricted creation and contains it. This great central truth gives meaning to all truths and passes on supreme value to all of life. God is present near us, next to us, sees us, and knows us through and through. The certainty that God is always near us, present in all parts of his world, closer to us than our thoughts, should keep us in a state of high moral gladness most of the time. This would not be all the time. It would be less than honest to promise every believer continual jubilee and less than realistic to expect it. But, Tozer says, presence cures our ills before they become fatal. And I need to repeat that one more time for myself. Presence cures our ills before they become fatal. The knowledge and understanding that we are never alone calms the troubled sea of our lives and speaks peace to our souls. As a child may cry out in pain, even when sheltered in its mother's arms, so Christians may sometimes know what it is to suffer, even in the conscious presence of God. Though advised to always rejoice, Paul admitted that he was sometimes sorrowful, and for our sakes, Christ experienced strong crying and tears, though he never left the bosom of the Father. Chapter 14 challenges everyone to learn or continue learning to appreciate God's presence with a conscious and intentional practice. It is not an imaginary idea that we should stir up and engage, but there must be a vivid reality that automatically includes and invites God's presence into every activity. God is key in his creation and there is no place in heaven or earth where anyone can hide from his presence. He is everywhere. He is here and everywhere. Not confined to a tree or stone, but free in the universe, near to everything, next to everyone. And through Jesus Christ, immediately accessible to every yielded heart. <laughs>